Hello, so it's nice to be here in person. Actually, I was the last year, but that was a challenge. Yeah, last year with COVID restrictions, uh, sudden PCR tests and everything. Now it's so smooth experience. So great and welcome you. And uh, yeah, so my name is Yarek. That's my Twitter handle. And yeah, that's maybe enough because we don't have much time. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about smart contracts and DAML as a language why you might be interested in that and then we'll, I will show doing some small application with that. Okay, so smart contracts, who knows what a smart contract is? Yeah, uh, maybe here, can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually it was very hard for me to define smart contract and hate and uh, you know, uh, definitions from Wikipedia that basically do not tell me what it is. And I had prepared some, you know, example what is between companies, stock exchange funds, but you know, it doesn't really help at all. But I have one uh, one definition that works for me and I'll, how can I, do I understand it? Maybe it's not really correct one, but, uh, but I like it. So hope you understand the digital signature. So there is a document and you can have a private key, you can sign it and then uh, because you do use some well-known algorithms, everyone can verify, yes, this document, plain text, was signed with a private key of someone that has this public key. And now, as long as you, as you can associate entity like a person or institution with a public key, then you can, for sure, you cannot, for instance, deny, oh, this was signed definitely by this person, and yeah, Oh, otherwise the, the, the key was stolen, but yeah. Uh, but this works on a static example. So document is static. So what is a digital signature? It's basically signing something that it's running. It's a machine that it's signed. So it's like a, it's like a computer where everything is running and it's everything is signed digitally, actually. And, the, and smart contracts more or less internally use a very similar algorithm as a, to, to the digital signature. Actually, it's quite often the same. So a smart contract, so you have some set of rules for a machine. And basically, let's say they are signed, they put publicly known. Then you have a code, someone sends a code to this machine and this code is signed. You know who submitted this code and this code is signed. Uh, there will be no discussion how this code looks like. And every input we do on this machine, it's signed. We know who sent this input to this machine and uh, all actions, actions basically are also, let's say, input. So it's like machine that we, can completely verify its state. In this moment, after so many steps, it won in the state, and we can verify it because every step was kind of signed. And uh, that's the, let's say, my understanding of a smart contract. It's a machine that works, and we know the rules, and everyone can verify. And DAML is just a language for this kind of machine. So uh, that's it, and this DAML uh, is a, Basically, what is important, open source. So it's something you can try anytime you want. It's a Haskell dialect. I will now show quickly and tell you what's a, uh, why it is Haskell, why it's not Haskell. So first of all, internally, we actually use fork of GHC. We, I'm a, a working for a company with, that's behind the dump. So that's why, why I know a little bit more than it's, uh, than it's of, you know, official papers. Um, uh, so this is a fork of GHC. What it means? Like if you are a Haskell developer and you are used to this, you know, if you are Haskell developers, you need to have this in your, at the beginning of the files. Who, who has this as a Haskell developer at the beginning of the files? Okay, some of you, maybe you have it in Cabal, but basically, yeah, that's what we do in Haskell. We use tons of uh, language extensions because uh, standard Haskell is not enough, but all of them I, uh, do compile actually in, uh, in uh, DAML. So there are on the other hand, some limitations. And the biggest one is actually the difference and that's for, for some people, they would, would say that's then definitely not the Haskell goal. Uh, strict semantic. It means we are not really lazy. Daml is not really lazy. It just eagerly evaluates uh, arguments for the functions. And finally, if we are talking about this machine that we can completely reproduce, uh, there are some huge limitations. What can actually happen on this machine? Can this machine read something from the internet, like, you know, prices and use it inside of computations? If it was, then it wouldn't be fully reproducible because how can you prove that it read exactly that? So technically might be possible, but we don't generally don't do that. We don't use normal random number generations, like really, really random, like from the, some noises, because how, how can you prove that this was actually chosen randomly, not something else? So this machine has to be fully reproducible. Actually, 
uh, we look back at this machine, what's there, it's like, think of it that behind is also kind of a database, but a very special database. We call it a ledger. What is a ledger? Has someone an idea? What is a ledger? Okay, it's a, something we use in accounting, but basically, uh, from technical point of view, this is a database that you never delete data from. You only append to it. Why? Because we want to verify how can it happen that this machine finally is in this state. We only can track it when we never change, when we never delete the data. So that's so. Uh, basically, DAML is a, w w what we can look at as a DAML is a stored procedures language. Who has worked with a stored procedures? On the <laughs> Who has worked with pleasure with stored procedures? <laughs> no, so I worked with PL, SQL, and other, other stored procedure languages, and basically they are not funny because those are mostly monsters from 80s, really old languages, not that funny to, to work with. Uh, Daemon, as I said, is a Haskell, so at least much nicer. But from the from the from our point of view, we can actually think of it as the same. There is a database, now we call it Ledger, so it is a special database, and we have just a language to work on the data in this database. To, uh, gather data to transform this data, etc. So, uh, and applications actually can use DAML exactly in the same way. We have some data defined on the ledger. I will show you how, and then we use DAML, so basically Haskell dialects to, to work in this data, to model the data, etc. So how you start it? So it's really easy. You just install something called DAML SDK. There is a page for that. And then you uh, call this, uh, I will show you that maybe just a moment. Uh, oh. And, oh, okay. What I have, uh, create num oh, numbers game app. Actually, I didn't want to create that, but yeah, I created now a new application, new numbers game app. And what do I have here? So this is the, uh, this is an example application that will be created for you, which consists of some DAML. Oh, you see some, uh, now it doesn't really look like Haskell, but I will show you later well, that it actually is. And then you have some UI, but you know, it wouldn't be funny to present this standard application that, because there is a tutorial for that and explains you in every step what's, what's happening there. We'll just skip it and we'll do it. Oops, uh, we'll do something. Uh, maybe not from scratch, but something of our own. So basically install DAML, create, uh, start this uh, new application and then profit. Okay, so there is, a, there, is, there is a guide for that, but I'm going to present completely uh, application written from scratch. And it starts from a game I played when I was uh, four years old, five years old, six years old. I do love this game and I'm really good at it. Uh, and I need someone to, this is a kind of a numbers game. I need a volunteer to play with me just to demonstrate the game. Who? Okay, you. So can you tell me a number? Uh, which? 53. So I say 54. Mine is bigger, I won. As I told you, I'm really good at this game. So, uh, however, this game is kind of not that interesting if you are not six years old anymore. So we make it more interesting. We make it uh, multiplayer and we'll not be openly saying these numbers. And we actually will not per, uh, um, competing who has says the biggest number, but who says the second biggest number. Now it's tricky. You have to, you know, put something high, but not too high. So uh, now there is a, can you use this QR code? Okay, let me try. Uh, so, you can, uh, you can try to, uh, I need some of you. I don't, uh, I'm may not fully sure it would work because it works on a very uh, slow machine somewhere in the internet. I actually had a problem today starting it up, but yeah. And now you vote. So basically you put some number. Okay. Okay, so I will call this, this should be looking like this. And uh, by the way, uh, one problem, if you log in, use uh, 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 lowercase, basically. That's a small limitation, I forgot to mention that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
whatever lower case should go. So I'm putting here a number. Now you will not see. Okay, uh, I will. Okay, that was suggested. Nine nine nine. Why not? So I'm. Yeah. So I played this game. I don't know how many of you did. Anyone put his number apart from me? Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, now I'm a little bit cheating. Okay. So there is now going some game. Ah, I see more people. There's actually what we see here. There is kind of a debug. And every time someone uh, no new joins to the game, we count to 30. So uh, if, if you stop betting, this should end finally. Oh, it's not, not ending. OK. <laughs> but let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Who, who will win? Oh, now, it's, now we're counting. Maybe someone will win. So actually, it means that uh, 39 people took part in this. This 40 means how many proposals? There. Okay, we see something and uh, just tell me, you should see if you want. Oh, <laughs> okay, we'll skip that. <laughs> oh, well, I, okay, I will show you later the results. So <laughs> that was a great thing. Okay, so uh, tell me in one moment, we'll go back there and see if someone has won. Uh, uh, so how does it work? So we have a code somewhere. Uh, and actually based on this standard application. Uh, so there is a DAML code. It's, there is a numbers. And as you see here, now it looks more like Haskell. Model numbers, import, some uh, data. I will show you this code later. But what is interesting, I can call something like that. And now you should see, you should work in a more um, reasonable way. Uh, you see Visual Studio, like uh, code, VS Code, and now we can navigate the code. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is like some goodie. You have SDK, which uh, automatically installs for you, uh, actually configures Visual Studio code for you with some extensions so that you can navigate DAML easily. And you, you have some additional interesting uh, extensions. I will show you all that. But okay, so uh, let me check. Did someone want? Uh, it's okay. It's almost there. Maybe we'll wait this 10 seconds. We'll see. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's move there. <sighs> Someone has won. And okay, who knows? Okay, got the result. I'm not showing here who has won, but I can show you like, like that. So localhost, oh, not localhost. I will navigate. To set black. Uh, down to down. Now it's a little bit slow. So it's slower than I expected. Okay, this is a really slow machine, but it should be enough. And so, wow, so many people. Now I'm lost where I'm. Uh, you see an admin here. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, this is working in a kind of a debug mode, uh, just uh, to make it easy for me to show you stuff. Okay, okay, we'll wait a little bit. It's it's too oh, and okay, it's really slow. It's loading, it's loading. And I will now tell you who has won and with which number. So basically, it's like a database. It should show our ledger. Actually, it's loading. It really takes a lot of time because the machine is overloaded or the connection is so so problematic right here. But uh, I could show you if it does. If that doesn't work, I will. But okay, it will work. One moment. So, so basically, we'll be able. There is a tool, Daml uh, Studio, that sh show uh, that lets you code, and there is a tool we call it Daml Navigator, which uh, lo lets you analyze the ledger. What's there? It's during the, you can use it during the debug, during uh, like initial stage of the project, etc. How the demo, uh, how the demo looks like, uh, with, I've modeled this like a bet player makes a bet with a number. Party is a special type, very important in, uh, in demo, which means basically who is participating. And user, you can, we call it party. As you see, also the writing works. And actually even more. So, now we write the function uh, second best from the list. So you see here one big difference. That's not option. That's not maybe bet, but optional bet. Don't ask me why. That was just a choice, uh, historical. And 
So if there was like empty list, we tell none, none has won. If there was only one bet, then this bet wins. Otherwise, we, for instance, can sort and choose the, uh, the, uh, the, the biggest number, not, not the biggest, but the second biggest, so with index one. Or we can, for instance, create instance uh, of an ORT type class, and we can make it this code simpler. Now, this was like Haskellish part, but there is extension because, as I told you, DAML works like a database. By the way, in the meantime, let's check if we've seen, oh, it's not really presenting anything. It's really slow. Okay, sorry for that. Maybe next time. Uh, uh, you, you've, you've seen who has won, by the way? Or you didn't track? Okay. Uh, no, it should you, you should see actually in this application when you are locked if you if you won or not. Sorry, you must most of you see probably see that you've lost, but okay. Uh, so what is this template? Template, think of it as a table. So it's a table and you have uh, three columns: player, dealer, and number. So player, party, who has played number? What number? I said. By the way, I could use bet here. This data, this this data type I just created. But yeah, for for just uh, just because I use it in this way. And dealer. Why is this dealer? Because it's very important that uh, all this information that we store in DAML, so this like table, must be read by someone. And without this dealer, it will be very hard to gather the information, all these numbers. So dealer is basically a party. Uh, here it will in the code it's hard for the admin that sees all these bets and can choose who has actually won. I will show you. And two important pieces of code: signature and observer. And that's actually that's a crucial. As I said, those moves must be a party type. So you uh, by putting signature, you choose one of the party as someone that has signed this information. It means this guy signed with his private key that yeah, I'm sending this information, I'm responsible for that. And the other one is observer. You can have, you don't need to uh, have observers, but basically if someone else has, is supposed to see this information, he must be observing. This is, for instance, a very big difference to how, I don't know, Ethereum works. If you, if you are putting something in Ethereum, basically everyone sees it. In DAML, this is uh, when it works on blockchain, only if you are observer of something, you are able to see. Even if DAML works on uh, Ethereum, because it actually can work, then only only designated parties can see. Other other people just see encrypted uh, piece of information. So that's how your proposal is stored. Just think about it as a table with three columns. Now we have game. Game is an entity. Like every game around is a game, and we have a dealer. So who is actually ruling this game? Who is leading? And then we have numbers. Actually, here I use this data type bet. And again, signature now is a dealer. This dealer that creates a game, he is responsible for that. And interesting part, choice. What is a choice? It's a function of data. But this, is, this could be a normal function. We can use normal functions in DAML. But those choices are special functions. What was what special of them? They are transforming the contract. So if you have a contract game and you want to append a proposal, so this is actually the argument, you, what you do, you end with a new game. Here is actually, I create, this is re result, this is argument so that's written this way. So, and contract ID is just means that we are interested in only ID of this game, no, no, not, not actually the content. But what is important that this append information is basically consuming the existing game. So every time I have a game, I append the proposal, I'm actually kind of making this existing game, the state of this game, consumed, archived. It's not uh, active anymore. And I create a new game. How I create it easily. This is the old game, but we've prepared that new proposal. And that's how it works. So we, in DAML, we have functions like uh, if you have an like, use API and query, you can check for an active state, what are the games that are actually active, and which are the games like in a previous state, which are archived. And this is really important because this allows, uh, this prevents you from things like double spending, that you, for instance, call something twice, like you, you know, transfer token twice. It's not possible by definition with this language, it takes care about it, that things will, will only happen if, if they are like, if you call a choice, it will happen only once. By the way, just uh, uh, if you have a proposal, I actually created here a little bit artificial thing like accept is a choice. And by the way, 
this is a choice that even though proposal is signed by the player and observer is dealer, the choice can be done by the dealer. And now, important part, uh, if the dealer did a choice, he ends up with a game, actually, because the result of that is a game, because finally we call this event. And now the dealer is actually signature of the game. So you are signature of an object, like here, a game, and you are signatory of all the data that's there, but only if you go through the steps that you accept, you, you're uh, like consciously, you're, that's your action that you choose the steps with, and all the data that comes into this contract is actually was confirmed by you because you did actions with this data. It will, so you'll never be like signing something that you didn't put there. Like I signed that I want to transfer the token, but I don't really actually, I haven't really created this action. So basically the logic of uh, compilation here takes care. And that's very important that if you are a signer for that, that's the signature is important. Then you had to do something manually. And when we uh, design systems with DAMU, that's kind of a correctness uh, checking. Uh, quite often we get information that, oh, this, this cannot be like signature here because yeah, the, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it, because the, uh, the party here wasn't actually doing uh, action on that. Uh, I can show you that because, uh, how does it work? Because we can write tests in DAML. So DAML, and you, you see quite a long, uh, let's say it looks like a Haskell so I create a game I click create a proposal second proposal as you see that after each accepting of proposal I get a new game and finally I may be checking that the expected winner is the one that gave a seven number because here was given uh, here was given seven five eight ten so second best was seven but what is important here for instance if as a Bob I'm sending a proposal and I say, this was proposal from Alice. So now I'm trying to think, oh, I am Bob, and that I'm working from my account, but I try to convince system that Alice was sending this number. What will happen? Uh, just, uh, just let me go to the terminal. I can use double test. That's how I call it. And I should see a fail. Uh, just a moment, it's relatively slow. Oh, it's, oh, I sorry, forgot about Visual Studio. I have to save it. <laughs> I will test. Oh, it now failed. Why it failed? Because uh, missing authorization from Alice. The, so that's how DAML pro prevents you and prevents basically potential uh, users of application for, from some data forgery. You cannot be signer of something if you haven't really signed it. So it's on the engine level and actually also on the compilation level, we check this. Okay. So finally, the results, or maybe now we see the results. Oh, no. So probably it won't work. I don't know why, but it seems to be too slow to actually get the data from the system. Yeah, happens. Yeah, that, uh, I see this is a connection problem actually right now. Yeah. So, but we will store the information as a result and then we put a winner. And that's, let's say, that's a contract that says who has won. And basically, then we will be able to see this person was winning in this game uh, done by this dealer. And so, by the way, see, you see, observer, there can be multiple observers and we can actually extract them like that. By the way, Daml from a very old version supports record syntax. So it's a, even though it's now uh, uh, working with a new uh, Haskell, you have in a Haskell version nine, this one, but Daml actually supported this dot syntax a long time ago. Okay, so that's it. So we can have, we have our data, we have transformations of this data. Uh, and uh, I've shown you DAML testing, by the way, one funny thing about DAML testing. So if you use this uh, DAML studio, you can see the results of that. So this is our ledger. So what you see that at the end, the results are like that. And here, all these uh, striked out things are uh, intermediate states that were archived because they were consumed. For instance, if I just comment this out, just a moment. Uh, I will just comment this out. You see that I ended with a game uh, with only two states, and that's actually an active state. 
Okay, that's uh, that's it. So there is like really nice tooling for that. So how, how it all works. So I will try to start the thing on a local machine in order to demonstrate you because uh, network is too slow to demonstrate you how it worked actually with your game. So I'll just use daml start here. So if I put my daml code in a, in a, in a folder, just where is Visual Studio here. Uh, so there is a daml code here. Uh, uh, I use, just use daml start and then actually what happens, there is a sandbox created that uh, creates a JSON API, gRPC API that you can connect to it and you can easily create application. And I can create uh, application in, uh, for instance, TypeScript with React that basically, and that's what you've seen actually. So moment, uh, let me get into the terminal. I will just, okay, I will use not nice terminal here. And then number scan you I npm start. Oh. And that's how we'll have uh, oh, it's actually running already. Okay, let's so let me get to this uh, local host application. Okay, so now I use Yarek. And so this was this application of seen that I could vote. What is important here that it's relatively easy to, uh, to create. So if you know React and you basically, you, you have some additional functions automatically, Daml creates for you 10 uh, uh, stub classes uh, uh, with, with a type trip. So you have, if you have a, a type proposal, then you, have, you can ask for a proposal and that's actually uh, your your TypeScript application will be able to see what's a pro, uh, the types that you use, like querying for results, and everything is easy. Then Scala part, I did it with uh, Scala part with uh, Zio. Let me show it. That's uh, okay. Moment. Uh, uh, again, for Scala, you can just generate Java stops. So all these numbers, bets, proposals will have corresponding Java codes uh, that you have uh, uh, right, uh, that you, you have generated, and then you can basically use it in a Scala code. And then, okay. Uh, and then you can query that. For instance, fetch double contracts, game template, and I can fetch all the existing games. And then I can check who, who has, uh, what, what proposals were created and uh, I can accept them. I, I, can, uh, I can steer the game from Scala. Okay, I tried to show you a navigator, but it didn't really work. Sorry for that, but maybe I will show you how it works from here. Uh, because, uh, okay, sorry, time is almost out. So as, as an, for instance, admin, I will be able to see that there is a proposal just created by me. So any time you can just inspect your, 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 your contracts, your state of your machine. And that's really crucial for, for contracts that you can inspect and you can validate everything. And finally, uh, if you want this to actually work on a database on a blockchain, then you have, blockchain, then you have to go to read about Canton and Canton drivers, and you can, for instance, easily make it working because now what I've shown you was some kind of an in-memory tool that makes it makes rapid development easy, but you can make it deploy it on SQL database easily. And just uh, for Postgres, the, there will be automatically tables created. And by the way, even if you read this database as an admin, the data inside will not tell you anything because it's all encrypted. So only if you are over, only if you are uh, uh, using the uh, correct keys you can, and you are observer of information that can, you can actually read it. Okay, that's the end uh, of this presentation. Thank you.